Thank you. So thank you, Richard and Pierre. So Richard and Pierre suggested that I just give a very brief presentation based around a new initiative that they've been playing a, a pivotal role in establishing, and we, they've called it Emerge. So it's the European uh, ME Research Group, and the flag sort of give an indication of the contribution so far to uh, this initiative. And we're obviously aware of needing to interact with um, our cousins across the oceans, uh, particularly Australia and the US. So um, the sort of beginning of this was really to address some of these issues that I'm sure most of you in the audience are familiar with. Uh, and this goes back, back into 2014 when Professor Derek Phoebe also noted this. So to advance ME research, we clearly need to have more people in involved in investigating it. And the funding is, there's never enough funding, but particularly for ME research. And there's a question about priorities of funding. I mean, as researchers like myself, we feel there's probably far too much going into maybe the therapy uh, and phenotype descriptions and not enough going into understanding the underlying basis and etiologies of the disorder. And sort of to develop that further, we need a coherent research strategy. We need to know what the questions are that we need to be addressing, and then we need to find the right people to start work on those questions. And we need the infrastructure to help support and bring people together to develop the research. So that was really the driving force behind Emerge. And really that's the bottom line, that's what we want to try and do, is to identify and define a sound research strategy that really overcomes all these issues and constraints. Um, so we held our inaugural meeting back in October last year, it was held here in London, and these are some of the things, the diagram just sort of illustrates some of the things that came out in the discussion, and the sort of boxed things are things that really we need to uh, take, take on board and really try and address because all of that will then lead to right at the bottom of the arrows there, the treatment, new treatments. And the treatments will probably be personalized and for individual patients. So those were some of the issues we identified. So again, this is it here. Uh, we need to address these and we, need, we could do this together rather than trying to do this individually. We thought you know, if we all came together, then we could do this much more effectively. And as a result, we identified three sort of schemes or areas of research in European speak, these are called work packages. Um, and there we are, that, that's sort of what we're looking for, improved diagnostics and treatments to really help us understand the causes. So this is what came out, so three areas that we need to address. One is diagnosis, and we've heard a lot about diagnosis. How can we accurately diagnose patients? And we'll probably end up dividing them into different groups according to uh, the diagnosis. There are groups of people there that were present at the meeting that have agreed to take the lead on this. The person underlined is the one who's sort of coordinating this activity. And really that sort of leads into developing a well-defined cohort of patients that we can then use uh, in our research and be involved in our research. The second one is biomarkers. We've, again, we've heard a lot about this uh, today and in previous meetings. And Carmen is taking a lead on this as well with other members. Uh, we've also incorporated imaging. It's important that we do some brain imaging in part of these studies to look and really get clues as to how or what we might do impacts on, on brain function. Uh, and then the third one is, is samples. So we're going to be collecting, hopefully, lots of samples. So we need to have a process by which we can standardize this and we can store them so that we can then distribute them to different research groups uh, wherever they might be. And Lewis Knackle, who's based in London, has sort of taken the lead on that. Now, an interesting development at the same time was a program that was, at that point, not funded was Euramine. And this was a group of uh, researchers that primarily were based in Eastern Europe that really wanted to try and establish a network, a means by which they could bring together researchers across Europe with a common interest in MECFSC. Um, at the time we had our meeting, we didn't know whether or not this would be funded, so we were sort of not uncertain as to how this might interface with Emerge. And what the blue boxes there illustrate some of the objectives that Euramine is trying to uh, deliver on. And as you can see, most of it is regarding bringing people together, getting them to interact with each other, to develop processes that will underpin any research activity. So this is a cost action. It's a particular program of work that's funded by the European Union. Um, it involves currently about 15 countries, and that's about 30 groups of researchers that are spread across these countries. And it started just around Easter time uh, this year, 
and will run for a period of four years. And the names there are the key people who are involved in managing and coordinating this activity. And you can see the UK has a representative, Aliana, who's based at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And all this Burkis from Latvia is probably the key person who's, who we've interacted with. So we heard that Euromin was going to be funded around the turn of the year. So um, I met with um, Aldis in Norwich to decide how we could work together, Euromin and Emerge. And basically, this is what we came to, the conclusions we came to. So Euromin is going to basically provide the infrastructure, the means by which we can bring everybody together to develop a consistent and coherent uh, structure by which we can undertake research questions. And the research would really be Emerge's initiative and to drive and identify the research questions and to then sort of bring people together that are part of Euromin and Emerge to actually undertake the research. So we had another meeting um, earlier this week, and we basically reinforced that we think this is a good way to go. Some of the objectives, those work packages I identified for Emerge, will actually probably end up being part of Euromin's primary objectives related to diagnosis, patient uh, stratification, collecting samples, leaving Emerge to really focus on you know, the direction of the research and how we do it. So a key uh, initiative then is, you know, what are the opportunities for funding the research? Um, we've looked extensively at the European Union funding program. It's called Horizon 2020. And unfortunately, there's nothing in there into which we could fit uh, ME research into. So we are more focusing now on sort of national funders. And in terms of what we can do to attract funding from, in the UK, that would probably be the Medical Research Council, is, you know, is we need to build on the current activity, things we already have going, in, going on that provide the feasibility and the rationale for making bigger projects. And there are a couple here that I've identified that are underway. Um, so um, infectious origin, I mean, you've heard Tom Wildman's talk today about infection from within and how in enteric viruses may be involved in that. So we're very interested in that. And there was an interesting little question about how do we get severely affected patients involved in research. And I can tell you that Daniel Vipond and Navina, the medical student you heard about, have spent the last two months making home visits to severely affected patients that are part of Amalak Bansal's um, Sutton ME clinic. And we've recruited about 11 of these severely affected patients into our study, so we've been collecting samples from them. And they will go forward into the search for the enteric viruses uh, and involvement in those disease. And this involves, I should say now, we've got involvement from two Swedish investigators, the Jonases, Jonas Blomberg and Jonas Bergfist, who've agreed to help us do this analysis. So already Emerge is starting to bring people together to work together on projects. Uh, some other initiatives that particularly Invested in Me is really helping to drive. We're hoping to get a rituximab trial in, in Norwich. And this involves Jonathan Edwards from UCL. We've also got Oyst and Flug involved from Oslo, so we're in advanced discussions with the uh, North and Norwich Hospital to try and get this going as soon as we can. And then working with Amalak, we're also getting interested in trying to develop a bacteria-based therapy. This might be FMT, it might not be. Um, so that we're hoping to get funding from, uh, it's called the National Institute of Health Research, to develop a bacteria-based clinical trial for ME in the near future. So there are some exciting initiatives that are starting to happen, and I think Emerge is identifying people that can contribute to these activities to make it more of a, a European-wide activity. And really, this is on the front of the program, I think, although it wasn't attributed to Henry Ford. I think it is. And I think what we're starting to get is the working together. So I think we're all sort of more optimistic than we probably have in the past because we feel as though we've now getting to close to that critical mass to really develop the research agenda. And although I said... Uh, this thank you. I do have one last slide, and that's this. This is a selfless plug for a, an article that's just been accepted. And this really underpins some of the virus work that we're undertaking. So Navina and Verity were two medical students who wanted to do something more after they'd finished their uh, Investing in Me-sponsored work. So I said, why not write a review article to summarize where we are in terms of the microbiome and, and ME-CFSE? So this is going to be published very soon. And this really raises in the article questions that we're now trying to address in the study that's just about to undergo with our severely affected ME patients. And I really will stop there 
and I'm happy to take any questions anybody may have. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well, of course, most of you, or all of you, are very important uh, players in this uh, initiative as well. So here's an opportunity, please, for you to add something, say something, be positive, be negative, as you like, because it, it's exciting days, really, and you don't get much excitement in your life these days, <laughs> especially when you support a football team that gets relegated every year. Yeah. <laughs> but go on. Please tell us. I mean, you understand the kind of things that are problems so is there something that we can think about? Um, do you think this is a practical issue within the UK population? Um, and, and it's quite personal. My son's had ME for six years. And what we're seeing is a contraction of services throughout the UK. I mean, it's very variable depending on where you <coughs> live. Um, and at the moment, it seems that most of the um, recruitment of patients comes through existing ME clinics or services within geographic areas. Now, my experience has been that whilst there may be initial diagnosis, and usually by exception, most people in my particular area, and I won't be specific, um, actually tend to find that if they cannot engage with either patient groups on a monthly basis, they can't travel, they're housebound, basically they're bumped off the list. They're told, if yes. you can't actually access what we're offering, actually you're not going to be on our list. And I think there is a real challenge as to how we recruit for people who have used services that are available, been discouraged by them, and basically are on their own devices. I just Sorry. wonder whether, certainly in the UK, there are any comments about how that might be um, overcome. Simon? Well, I mean... Uh, well, I can speak about the North Norwich University Hospital, which doesn't have a consultant ME specialist, which is what's really holding back developing the trial there. But there are um, primary care practices based in Norfolk, which fortunately do specialise in ME, so we're recruiting uh, physicians from those primary practices to come in and help us with the trial um, and actually deal with Norfolk, Norfolk and Suffolk ME CFSE patients. But we, we are necessarily constrained by where we can get access to patients, and that is through the very few clinics that do exist, I agree. And it's taken us almost a year to get the ethical approval for us to be able to visit severely affected patients in their own homes to recruit them for studies and to obtain samples from them. I mean, the bureaucracy is just horrendous. And it's going to get harder in the health service as the cuts bite deeper, we know that. And nobody, and everybody's just sitting back and said, oh, we can't do anything about it, which is nonsense. We've been arguing in Norwich for ages to have a service there, which used to be there in Yarmouth, as you know, and the chap yeah. retired, and they haven't replaced them because ME isn't a problem. I mean, we still get that, you know, all the time from the, the big wheels in the health service. We don't accept it for a minute, but uh, it's a question of how ugly you want to get with them. And you are so important in this. Patient groups and Invest in ME has really had a big presence at meetings with the hospital bigwigs to talk about these issues. And we get the usual sweet words, honeyed words and promises, but we have to keep going back and we ain't going to give up, you know, because they haven't got an argument, really. They could, they could set something up if they wanted and replace things that were there and they're disappearing. The services for patients are very, very bad in this country. In fact, they're non-existent in areas. Yes. Yeah, well, maybe we need to set up a joint patients organisation, but, you know, coming from the cancer field, I know how they don't get on with each other for all sorts of personal reasons. It's very difficult to say to them, why don't we get together? We're more powerful when we work together. In America, the charities do hunt in packs. When they go to Capitol Hill, they really get stuck into congressmen and senators. And it's very influential, as Vicky will say, because senators can make things happen for some reason. And they could in this country too. So a concerted campaign might be another arm. But these guys are scientists, you know, and they want to get the science going, which 
really reinforces the kind of political and social arguments that we need. So we really do need, and you, many people, if you would all join an organization tomorrow, I'll sign you up and we'll march on Downing Street, you know. Well, I once took a march of beekeepers to, to Bounce and Gordon Brown, and suddenly two million pounds appeared because we threatened them with the bees. All the beekeepers came from all over England uh, with the bees. <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry, yeah, we briefly touched upon this earlier on about faecal microbiota uh, transplantation, and you're, you're going to be doing a study on that. Um, Probiotics is big business at the moment. There are so many probiotics out on the market costing so much money. What role is there for probiotics in treatment of ME? Yeah. Mm. Um, there is some evidence that probiotics can be effective in clinical practice. Um, however, these are not accessible. They are generally prescription only and they combine a cocktail of microbes. There's a preparation called VSL3 which is proven to be effective in, in some um, forms of uh, chronic diarrhea, for example, blad even bladder cancer. But there's no indication that probiotics are effective in this disease. Um, that I think I wanted to anecdotal piece of evidence. But um, I mean, it relates to what Tom was saying earlier, that the probiotics, you know, the, the things you take in a yoga pot, we've no idea how many live bacterial cells there are and how many of those will reach the target part of the colon and they don't get lost or destroyed in the stomach or the, uh, the small intestine. So it, it, they're really not effective, um, I think, in chronically affected individuals. There's no evidence, for example, they work in inflammatory bowel disease. Okay. The, yes, please. And then, and then Vicky, yes. And then we'd better go and change your bacteria. You, you, you mentioned... Um, uh, environmental <coughs> transmission um, and there are some suggestions about the way CFSME mimics Lyme's disease. I wonder if you had anything to add to that? Mm, um, not really. Um, I mean anything that disturbs your microbiome and that can be something you eat that's contaminated with um, a bacteria or a virus or a toxin um, we've heard about organophosphates, you know, if you're eating organic food that has traces of, or well, not organic food in this case, but traces of food that have traces of these chemicals, they can alter the behaviour of your microbiome. If you're changing your diet, it can rapidly change the makeup and activity of your microbiome. So it's, you know, it, it's, it's vulnerable to uh, a whole variety of insults. It's amazing that it has such resilience and it does keep us healthy most of the time. Thank you. Can you comment on, do you see ways forward where we could partner with Euromine and Emerge yeah. to, as we're both developing research strategies Absolutely. to make sure that we're leveraging expertise and resources ac around the world? I'm very glad you said that. Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. All right. well, thank you. And as Ian said, you know, it's, some, it's just, I mean, it's money in the end of the day. You know, we're, we're keeping going on through investing in me. I mean, without them, we, we wouldn't be able to do anything at all. So, you know, what it needs now, we've got gaining critical mass of research is what is needed now is just the money to allow us to actually do the experiments. You know, we're, we're that close to really advancing the field, I think. And it, it just needs a few key investments in key areas. And I'd be perfect for co-investment with the US.